topic of the day. Can you tell the difference between these two cucumbers? Maybe not, because to the untrained eye, one is clean and one is not. And with everything going on today, people are complaining about washing their produce. Well, you should have been washing your produce anyway, and here's why. First, actually, I digress. Washing your produce can be done with dish soap and water, depending on the produce. Obviously, if it's a porous item, such as um, cantaloupe or something of that nature, you may not want to use dish soap. <clears throat> However, there are chemical washes and things like that that you can do. You can even use bleach, really, really diluted bleach. I think it's almost like a, you know, one to ten part. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. This one, see how shiny that is? Oh, that's nice. And this one is dull in the sheen. You can see the light reflecting on it. But look at that. Nice and shiny. <clears throat> this one has not been washed. Okay. This has wax on it to help keep it preserved when it's in shipping to your store. This one have had wax on it, but it's now been cleaned. So you can tell the difference. Clean, dirty. And guess what? This wax will also hold in pesticides and herbicides and whatever chemicals and fertilizers they've used in the gardens or uh, fields for their produce. So you need to be washing these anyway because this wax is only holding in the chemicals that are underneath it on the skin. So you definitely need to wash it. Um, you know, trick I use for onions. I don't wash onions. Why? Because when I go to cut it, I cut the tip off and I peel back that first real usable layer all the way down and I just remove it completely. And the reason for that is because when you start to see it, you'll see that it starts to form a thin skin around that outside wax, or that, that outside skin. And that's because it's already started to deteriorate. Um, and you'll also see thin spots and mushy spots on that outside layer. The outside layer ends up turning into this dry stuff when it's completely dehydrated. Okay? So that thin skin is actually a layer of the onion that has basically shriveled up and died and is now protecting the rest of the onion. Now that we're in focus, there's that first layer I was talking about. See that dry skin up on top? It attaches to that first layer of onion. And that's between the first layer and the second layer. So I go ahead and peel off the whole entire first layer because it's already started to disintegrate and turn into that dry skin which doesn't give it any flavor because it's already dried out and, and uh, starting to web. So go ahead and remove that whole first layer of skin. And by first layer of skin, I'm not referring to the dry skin, I'm talking about the first onion layer. Alright, just wanted to show you that in case it was a little confusing earlier. There you go, there's the webbing. I wouldn't eat that. point is, you're worried about your viruses and your bacteria, wash your produce. It's important. Not only did somebody probably sneeze on this one, now I've got to go wash my hands, but you never know what's underneath that wax. So, just something to keep in mind. Grow your own, and you're pretty much good to go. Buy from a grocery store, and you have to worry about that kind of stuff. Take you into our pantry here. Bananas. Bananas, bananas. Bananas are gassed in the warehouses, okay? And they're gassed to make them turn ripe. So you go to the grocery store, you want green bananas, which are usually going to be like, you'll find your organic bananas and stuff, but they've been gassed too. Um, and not directly, but because they're in the same warehouses, that gas penetrates. So when you buy 
container of bananas. They come in a big cardboard box with a plastic bag over them. That plastic bag is to keep the gas inside. They typically do that with avocados, with bananas, um, anything that's shipped green from Mexico or whatever, or overseas, um, they gas them to ripen them up. Alright, so something else to remember. Um, if you want to know how I know this, I used to be in the produce business. Uh, so that's my credentials. <laughs> I'm not going to go into details or the companies or anything like that, but um, one other thing that you should also be aware of is anything that says it's organic on the shelf comes in contact with non-organic produce. So by law, it can't be organic if that is the case. And I tell you, once it hits those grocery stores, you've got your produce sitting mixed. You've got your organics with your non-organics. And by law, it is no longer considered organic. So that's something to remember. It might have been grown organic. It might have been everything up until the shipping point. Because if the gas from the regular bananas gets on the organic bananas, it's no longer organic. Okay? So when you see your, uh, your greens on the wet shelf, and there's not a divider between the organic and the non-organic, those organic ones are no longer organic because they are in contact. They are using the same water and everything else that the non-organic ones are. So just keep that in mind. It's very hard unless you grow your own or go to a private uh, dealer or farm directly to actually get organic products unless they're packaged. Okay, this is when you, this is your best bet for finding organic material is in prepackaged bags. All right, just some tips. Just figured I was in the produce cutting business for a sandwich and said, hey. I might make a video on this. Hope you learned something. On to the next.